Welcome back. Well, it's only November, but North Dakota hockey has already played in its share of huge rivalry series so far this season, and that trend continued and maybe even peaked this past weekend in the Rockies. For more on this, we'll send it up to Alex Heinert in Grand Forks. Alex? Thanks, Kelly. Yes, we can now add Denver to the list of old rivals that UND has faced this campaign. The Pioneers joined the likes of Minnesota and Wisconsin from the old WCHA that dotted Bradbury's schedule. And like those other two programs, DU entered this past weekend series ranked in the top seven in the nation. Let's go to Magnus Serena. And not just top seven, number one, how about the reigning national champions, Austin Bogansky, Peter Tomey back in net for UND. Cam Johnson still out with injury, taking on Henrik Borgstrom, the nation's leading scorer, and the DU Pioneers. And early on in this one, it was all Denver. You talk about a good start for the home team. DU got it right off the bat. They would get a goal six minutes into the contest. Jake Durflinger right there able to beat Tomey after he made a couple of good saves. 1-0 at that point. They would add to that tally on the power play. Jared Lucas Savages, who had a hat trick in the NCAA championship game last year over Duluth, scoring there to make it 2-0. We go to the second. UND on the power play. Shorthanded, though. Logan O'Connor makes the interception and able to beat Tomey at the other end. Good effort that time by the freshman for his first goal on the season. 3-0 DU before you can even blink. And the Magnus Arena crowd fired up. Not much Peter Tomey could do about many of those goals. So halfway through the second, after that third goal goes in, Bradbury calls a timeout, a chance to regroup his guys. And UND responds right after that. Sophomore Zekyon able to beat the reigning Richter Award winner Tanner, Tanner Gillette. Stick side that time from a quick wrist shot midway through the second. Watch it again here. Probably a shot that Gillette saves what, 98 times out of 100, but Jan able to beat him there. That made it 3-1, to one, and that started the comeback. Gabe Bast here after the turnover, putting one on Gillette. Joel Janet Tweenen right there to bang home the rebound. First of the season for the junior from Finland. Look at Janet Tweenen, great reaction there off the rebound from the Bast shot. 3-2 to two, Denver at this point, and they weren't done yet. Colton Pullman right down the other direction. The sophomore defenseman going high, bar down and in past Gillette. 3-3 three three at this point, that goal coming at the start of the third period. Jim Montgomery can only hang his head, and UND still wasn't done. Christian Milanen with the quick wrist shot from the point off the faceoff win. Again, watch it again. Gardner to Pagansky, slides it over. I, I couldn't, even, couldn't even follow this shot. It was going so fast from the camera position. Milanen's fourth of the season, 4-3 UND with four unanswered. The Sioux fans in the crowd going nuts. Denver, though, wasn't ready to go away quietly. Troy Terry, America's sweetheart from last year's World Juniors, able to score here and beat Tomey on the power play, tying it up at 4-4. That came with nine minutes left in the contest. North Dakota, though, no desire to go to overtime. A Hayden Shaw shot from the point, deflected in by Johnny Simonson. That goal coming with just 2.31 left in this one. See it again here. Through the traffic, nothing Gillette can do. Huge goal from Simonson, his second of the season. UND would have to hang on. A late flurry from Denver made things interesting, but Peter Tomey and company stay unbeaten. Six straight now unbeaten for UND, and Tomey stays perfect in net. A huge 5-4 win thanks to those four unanswered goals between the second and the third. Simonson gets the game winner. And just an incredible night all around. That snaps, by the way, Denver's 13-game home winning streak. The first win for UND in Denver since December 13th, 2014. And the boys were fired up about it after this one. They kind of played played our game in the first, like got sticks on pucks, had their feet moving, got pucks to the net, and uh, we were sim we simply just weren't doing that. So I think that was the message. There, there's no panic in there. I, we, knew we're, we know we're a good team and uh, just start playing the right way and uh, the goals will come. Well, I think we were just trying to trying to do pretty plays, and uh, the coaches, you know, really nipped that in the bud quick in the first intermission. And as soon as we started to simplify our game with our D-man moving pucks north, you started to see us, uh, you know, have more ozone time and more shots on net. For our team to prove that to ourselves that we can, you know, dig ourselves dig ourselves out of a hole like that, uh, that's huge. And obviously, the points are huge too in in the conference. It's emotional. It's a big win. It's a big road win. But you gotta enjoy it now. Enjoy it for the next five minutes, ten minutes, then. Uh, turn the page and, and get ready to go to work. It's, it's going to be a tough, tough game. It's tough to win two nights in a row in, in college hockey, especially against a team like Denver. So we'll have our work cut out for us. Christian Willan and foreshadowing a little bit towards Saturday. UND going back in black for game number two. First time we see the business suits this season. You'd expect the reigning national champions to come out strong on night two. 
Tanner Gillette giving up five goals uncharacteristically, and he'd give up a sixth in this series, only seven minutes in. Freshman defenseman Matt Kierstead, who did not play on Friday night, steps off the bench and jumps onto the score sheet. Colin Adams with the feed, freshman to freshman, and it was 1-0 UND before you could really get settled in your seat. Big goal there for Kierstead, his second of the season. It would pretty much go DU's way, though, from there. On the power play, eight minutes later, Henrik Borgstrom, his 12th of the season, able to beat Peter Tome short side. DU right back in at 1-1 one one at this point. That, by the way, came on a Cole Smith five-minute major penalty. You would be able to fend off the rest of that major, keep it 1-1 one, one through 1. In the second, a lot of big saves by both of these goalkeepers. Peter Tome matching Gillette save for save. Best one coming right here. Nick Jones thinks he's got the stop. Puck eventually falls across the way to Durflinger, and another great stop by the freshman from Minneapolis, 1-1 one, one through 2. In the third, however, Troy Terry and this power play unit would just take over. Good feed in front. He finds Colin Staub. This one was even strength, by the way, to make it 2-1, to one, just a minute five into the third period. North Dakota, though, staying resilient. Freshman Colin Adams with an assist earlier. Thinks he's got another one here, finding Jordan Kawaguchi to bury one past Tanner Gillette. Lots of celebrations. Again, fired up here. The freshman scoring a big goal. Jim Montgomery, though, not happy with what had happened to his goaltender after the fact. And watch it again. Not really much in this. Adam skates right past Gillette. Maybe a little contact with the stick. The officials review it, however. They wave the goal off, much to the chagrin of Bradbury and everybody wearing green in Magnus Arena. Not happy at all with the call. And Denver would take the initiative from there. A minute after that call was reversed, UND on the power, giving up a penalty. Denver on the power play, Troy Terry able to beat Tomei High again, almost the exact same spot where he scored from the night before, and then Terry providing the feed here to Borgstrom for his second of the night. A three-point night for Terry, four points for Borgstrom. That made it 4-1, to one, and there was no comeback on the way on Saturday. A big win for Denver to get back in the win column and snap UND's six-game unbeaten streak. First time Peter Tomei has tasted a defeat in his short UND career. Obviously, the, un, uh, the goal that was disallowed, a big talking point after this one. I thought our key for tonight's game was getting a good start, and I thought we actually had that. I thought uh, throughout the game, we kind of got in a little penalty trouble, and that kind of, at the end of the game, kind of got us in a lot of trouble, and they scored a few power play goals on us, and especially against a team like Denver with a lot of high-skilled players, it's, we can't give them any extra space, and especially on the power play, they're, they're hitting seams on us, and that's kind of what got us in trouble tonight. I was just driving the guy wide, and I really tried to get a shot, but uh, I kind of fumbled. Like, I messed up and I fumbled it, and uh, Jordan was lucky there to uh, bury it home, but uh, got disallowed, so. We just tried to keep positive about it. You know, we didn't get many bounces, but that's how hockey goes. Well, even the freshmen know the bounces don't always go your way. Stick around, though. Bradbury gives us his thoughts on UND's split in the Mile High City. That's coming up when Midco Sports Tonight returns.